everybody and welcome back to my Operation Moonsucker series. We are back in orbit around the moon and the next thing we're going to do is build the actual base. This is going to in the, this is going to involve a lot of landing and getting back up to this thing here which I lovingly call the spine which will be the main fuel hub circling around the moon. Yeah, this little craft here is called the Carry Hall and it is going to deliver the first portion that we're going to set down onto this very nice and resource-rich area that we discovered in the previous episode. Okay. We really need to find a suitable landing place. I don't want to set down in that canyon-like area down there. And we failed. At our first attempt. So? Again! Yes, we're going to do this again. And this time we found a nice crater and we also didn't create another crater. So the eight engines that I'm using to slow this thing down are firing slowly. We're going to set this down really gently because we don't want any scratches on our valuable equipment. The equipment being the rig, which is going to be our refinery. This thing here consists basically of some ore tanks, some drills, solar panels, also some fuel cells and, of course, docking ports to attach other stuff. Okay, and once that we have delivered it, it's time to get back up into orbit. So, in order to do that, we first fire our vertical engines until we have reached sufficient height and velocity. Then we switch around to the direction we want to take and fire our main engines. This thing here is flying completely autonomous even though it's capable of being used by crew. I'm going to plan, you see me here, uh, change the thrust level of the second aerospike engine so that I don't have to make my RCS system do overtime. Because, of course, once the payload, which you see here, is down, then the entire center of mass thing shifts and then you have to adjust and, yeah. I figured out if I adjust my thrust level of the lower engine on the carry hall that I can manage quite nicely and keep this thing really stable. We're doing a circularization around the moon and then it's time to get back to the spine. Well, why do I call it spine? Basically, it consists of some sort of backplate where I have docked the entire things that I want to move down to the surface or store up in orbit, which are mainly fuel tanks. So this here is a depot and in order to be efficient, it is built in such a way that you can access a lot of those tanks at once, if you have to. Okay, but first we're going to have our rendezvous. There we are. And then we're going to pick up another piece of equipment. You can see here something that has wheels. And yes, it's a rover. If you remember my previous Moonsucker series, if you have watched that, thank you for sticking around for so long. I hope you enjoy this one too. Okay, if you've seen my previous series, I've used a sort of flatbed vehicle to move around my tanks and other equipment on Minmus. And it was a lot smaller than this one, because back then I only tried to move the half-size S3 tanks, and not this huge 82-ton thingies. And also Minmus's gravity is a lot lower than the moon's. You can see me here moving that other tank piece back into the center of the spine. And we're getting rid of that. Uh, we're getting rid of those now useless engine compartments. Alright, time to get the flat badass 
and yes that is the name of that rover down to the rig okay we're doing a very vertical descent here and unfortunately we're quite a bit away from our base so we're going to have to do a little hop back to it I could maybe drive there, but it would be a lot more tedious and I still have a bit of fuel left, so this shouldn't be a problem. Balancing between vertical and main engines. And once we are getting closer, you can see the station in the background already, well, the base. What's the difference between a station and a base? Can anybody tell me? Station is in orbit, base is on the ground. But you can still call it a ground station? I don't know, tell me in the comments, I'm really interested in your opinion. Okay, we're now on a good approach towards our base. Towards the Moonsucker rig. And, well, now the fuel is getting a bit sparse, to be honest. I hope I don't crash this again. But this could work out. Oh well, I think this is as close as I will get. Without crashing, of course, that is. Okay, trying to set this down gently. I don't want to ruin my newly delivered equipment. And this looks fine. Yes, we have touched down. Great! Now I'm using the little bit of fuel I've got left to orient myself more towards the rig so that the rover will have a more easier job transferring between the carry-all and the rig. Okay, and in order for the rover to work, of course, it has to have some contact with the ground. And there we go, we have released our docking port and are now able to move this thing to the base. Also, this thing here is fully autonomous, it has a probe core and antenna, so we are able to completely control our base without any crew. But still, as you can see, there is a cockpit part, so we will have a crew in the end eventually. Okay, now it's time to dock this. Let's hope this fits. It fit in my trials. Hmm, but for some reason it only fit once when I used the landing gear to kind of tip the rig to some degree. I don't know why that happened, it happened. Maybe because the oar put some more stress on the landing legs, I don't know. Anyhow, we have our successful dock with the rig. We have transferred, well we have created fuel actually. We have transformed ore into fuel, water into wine, basically. And now that we have done that, we have to refuel our carry haul, because we've used all the fuel to get this tank and the rover back down to the surface. Oops! Oh, well, that was a bit too harsh. Why is it sliding that way? Hmm. Shouldn't it have some really good ground contact? Anyhow, I tried again and then it worked out a lot better. And now, watch this! Haha! <laughs> there we go, I'm using the larger landing legs to kind of create some crane functionality or like a lifting platform. So the thing is, that rover lifts up to attach to the carry haul and after refueling it, it can drop back to the surface. So you don't have to have perfect contact with the docking ports and this makes it a lot easier, believe me. But now we're going to let this thing stay docked to the rig because of course the rig is supposed to create more fuel. And once again I had to kind of shift the oar around to make the station tip into a certain direction and also get rid of some of the landing legs. This was really a weird setup. I don't know why this didn't come up in my planning phase, but well there it is, you have to improvise in space. Sometimes. 
Well, I think a lot of times. Okay, now that the tank is secure, we're going to wait for our next delivery. And the carry haul gets back up into orbit. Since we have now lost our load, we're a lot lighter and a lot more maneuverable. Once again, I've reduced the thrust on the lower engine. You can see the difference in the plumes there. And we're back at the spine, which is waiting for us already. So, time to get the next tank. I thought I maybe don't need that squid tug that I've told you about in the previous episode and just dock to that tank protruding over there. And well, maybe that would be it. But no, due to me having to design the carry haul with a cool tilted down nose, I had to detach the tank from the spine and yeah. I kind of played space ball with it. This is really embarrassing actually. And yeah, once I got back to the tank or got that tank back under control or somewhere near the carry hall, I managed to get it onto that lander. Okay, now that we've done that, of course, we can get back down to the surface and aim for our base. There it is, nicely sent into that big crater. Okay, we're on a good approach vector. And this time I think we're going to manage to land a bit closer to the rig than before. Okay, this looks nice. Those visual enhancement mods really make that game pop. I've got installed Scatterer and Environmental Visual Enhancements for those who are asking. Alright, okay, time to get the rover out there. The flat badass it's moving is the flat badass is moving its ass. You can see the little probe core and antenna on the right side. Well from your side it's the right side, from the rover side it's the left side. Okay. Once again, we're going to use our landing gear -da, to dock to the tank. And yes, since we're floating, we're, going, we're having a good dock with the tank. Dropping down. Perfect. And then time to get back to our base. Dock this thing to the base and let it fill up. Boom! This looks a lot easier than it was in reality because ground docking is kind of a hassle. Alright, enough fuel in our tanks to get back up into orbit and then get back down. So let's just do exactly that. Okay, once again I have to adjust a little bit my thruster and get another rendezvous with the spine. Here it is! Okay, and this time I'm go not going to bother with trying to get the tank on the, f on the carry haul on my own. No, I'm going to use my squid tug. Here it is. And well, you can probably guess why I call it the squid. The reason for those protruding arms are that the RCS modules are located there. And the reason for that is, well, the center of mass of those 82-ton tanks. Even when empty, it's a lot easier to have the RCS on all sides of the tank and not just on one side, if you just dock the tug on one side. Okay, this makes, of course, the docking a lot easier. Boom, there we go, without any tumbling and chasing after a lost tank. And once we've done that, of course, we have to get the tug back to our rig. There it is. Thank you for your cooperation. Boom. And we have docked back. And of course, then again, repeat until finished. Yes, this is kind of a tedious thing to do because I have to get a lot of tanks down here because a lot of tanks need refueling. And 
And yes, this is going to be the last one you're seeing in this video. Next episode, we're going to see something new. What could it be? Well, stick around to find out. Until then, thanks for watching. Goodbye.